Well, despite Mayor Eric Adams, the Democrat, complaining that New York City doesn't have sufficient cash to handle its ongoing welfare for migrants, while expanding his payoffs to migrants in the form of debit cards and $4,000 each for 150 of them to find new housing, the New York City Council voted September 12th to create a panel to produce a plan to expand the welfare problem under the absurd misuse of the handle reparations. Yeah, it's really a sad, illogical, immoral attempt to create new victims and beneficiaries as determined by the political plantation overseers. And yet, many politicians inside and outside of New York City seem to adore the idea and completely miss the immorality of it. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV and here's the story. Alexander Hall reports for Fox News, quote, New York City will soon be the largest city in the U.S. to enact a reparations program. Council members Crystal Hudson and Farah Lewis sponsored a pair of bills to establish a Truth, Healing and Reconciliation Commission and a reparations task force. Both bills passed on Thursday and will be effective immediately. Today, the New York City Council voted to pass legislation establishing municipal efforts to acknowledge and address the legacy and impact of slavery and racial injustices in New York City. The New York City Council announced in a press release, the package of legislation would establish a truth, healing and reconciliation process on slavery within New York City, which had one of the highest rates of slave ownership in the country in the 1700s a reparation study, informational signs at the city's first slave market, and a task force to consider the creation of a freedom trail commemorating abolitionist movement and underground railroad sites, end quote. All of which is meaningless, except to signal to ethical people that the coercive power of the government is gearing up to take money from folks who never harmed others and give it to others who were not harmed. All, of course, predicated on a flimsy, neo-Marxist, race-baiting, touchy-feely fantasy that creating new victims of government-forced slavery will make up for crimes that other people committed when slavery was legal from housing and education to our physical, mental, and economic health. It's important that our city not just recognize these longstanding injustices inflicted on black New Yorkers and communities, but that we take steps to redress these harms through potential remedies. As I noted in 2023, when California's absurd reparations task force was conducting meetings and throwing around welfare numbers as high as $223,000 per recipient. And by the way, Gavin Newsom has asked for numerous amendments to the resultant reparations bill thus pushing back their possible passage and putting their future in question. Well, this kind of thinking is utterly perverse and sick. I said then, quote, beyond the fact that none of these potential recipients of reparations was injured and therefore cannot be made whole through these fictitiously termed reparations, there is the fact that even if one were to believe that the descendants of slaves deserve to have the state make slaves out of people today, such that these new slaves, the taxpayers, will hand over big sums of cash for things they never did, the history of slavery is such that virtually every individual in any race can claim that at one time or another, his or her ancestors were enslaved or preyed upon. Where does this original sin for slavery concept end? End quote. I also wrote that Dr. Thomas Sowell noted, quote, Blacks were not enslaved because they were black, but because they were available. Slavery has existed in the world for thousands of years. Whites enslaved other whites in Europe for centuries before the first black was brought to the Western Hemisphere. Asians enslaved Europeans. Asians enslaved other Asians. Africans enslaved other Africans. And indeed, even today in North Africa, blacks continue to enslave blacks, end quote. 
And as I noted, the likely etymology of the term slave reveals more of how widespread and ancient the terrible crime of slavery has been. As Atlas of Enslavement notes, quote, a large number of Slavs are said to have been captured in battles with armies from the Eastern Roman Empire and taken away as slaves. From the 9th century on, the name of the people and the legal status became mixed. The name of the Slavs may have been given to slaves as a result of the long-distance slave trade. According to this theory, this trade increased significantly in the early Middle Ages when large numbers of Slavs were on the market, end quote. But hey, perhaps if the two main sponsors of this New York move are so animated about blaming contemporary Americans for the wrongs of the past, both Democrat Crystal Hudson and Democrat Farah Lewis could tell us whether they support Kamala Harris for president, since of course, Harris's four times paternal great-grandfather, Hamilton Brown, was one of Jamaica's most notorious slave owners. The Irish Times notes, quote, Brown emigrated to Jamaica, then a British colony, and became an enthusiastic slave owner on the sugar plantations that were the mainstay of the island's economy. He opposed the abolition of slavery across the British Empire in 1832, end quote. And of course, the elephant in the redistribution of wealth room is the government. If people want to claim that the New York City government was at fault for slavery at some time in the past, well, they can't affix culpability to anyone but the government officials and their supporters who were alive in that era. Making residents of New York City responsible for the wrongs of others from another era is wrong in itself. Marks the next step to advancing racial justice and equity in our city. It is what our city and communities deserve. We need honesty in understanding the historical legacy of slavery in New York City and its impact on New Yorkers, as well as a path towards healing, reconciliation, and repair. Some people recognize the immoral attack on natural rights at the heart of this everyone is culpable canard. Fox News' Hall reports, quote, not all New York City council members are happy about this. I'll move before I'll pay, minority leader Joseph Borelli told the New York Post. Borelli was one of the eight council members to vote against the legislation. If they can introduce me to one New Yorker who owned a slave, I'd be happy to consider it, he added. But until then, I'm not paying a dime as a reparation for a harm I did not cause nor condone nor once participated in, end quote. It remains to be seen if the reparations panel will push for monetary payments in New York City, but the entire investigation will require tax money to operate. And isn't that sufficient enslavement to see more New Yorkers stand against it? The entire paradigm is corrupt from the government taking money from people for the panel to the concept of reparations that take from the innocent and give to those who haven't been harmed. But if anyone thinks the politicians who already back the nonsense will stop, well, they're as mistaken as the pushers of the generational reparations concept itself. This, of course, is another powerful tool in their box of collectivist tricks. And if the political slave masters can use that tool, they most certainly will. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Find us on Rumble where they don't censor us. You can find us on YouTube where they still are censoring occasionally. And of course, find us all the time at mrctv.org. mrctv.org, please consider donating to the Media Research Center. Check out the MRCTV store. See what the whole team is doing. Open up a new tab and see what they're up to. And of course, follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram. If you want to find me over on Gab, I'm at Gardner Goldsmith on Gab. And on Twitter slash X, I'm at Gard Goldsmith. Thanks for watching. Please share the videos for MRC TV. I'm Gardner Goldsmith.